Welcome to another vlog. We are at Store Hub. Got a couple of things to do here this morning. We've got the podcast to record, the Turf and Tools podcast. Um, I also have to do a little bit of shuffling around. We're going to be putting the flail mower on the back of the ute after the podcast. Uh, I'm going to be taking that to do the backyard at the place that I did the front yard, the small front yard that was wildly overgrown with a palm tree in the front going back to knock that over today. There's a bin there now, so I can get rid of most of the grass. It's a pretty wild backyard, not a massive backyard, but I think the flower mower will be good at detaching all of that growth and getting rid of the horizontal growth. There's a lot of clippings there that have been left there. The guy actually told me last time it was cut, um, it was done with a hedge trimmer, which can be quite effective for long grass, but if you just leave it there, it all starts to break down very very slowly and and suffocate the lawn a bit but clearly hasn't stopped it from growing but uh yeah i'm just doing some shuffling now got to get the remote control mower off as well been having a lot of fun with that yeah it's a very polarizing bit of equipment it seems i don't know if people feel threatened by it or people either seem to be like me and like oh wow that's cool i'll try this out or um, the other side of the coin is people get upset about it. <clears throat> I've noticed in a, a lot of my videos lately where I've used it, here's some really negative comments, which is odd. I mean, it's just a lawnmower. I'm trying it out. It's not, I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm not saying it's the next lawnmower that everyone's going to have or anything. It's, it's obviously a niche bit of gear, but the uh, emotional reactions to this thing in the, in the comments has been a little odd. I found that any time I, I show something that is a little bit different. Uh, you get that sort of response. Well, that makes it easy to get off. Obviously, I'm not gonna pull those ramps out every time I wanna do that, but I'm gonna be using this thing a bit more like purely because I enjoy using it. It's fun, like, why would you not wanna have fun while you're working? In most scenarios, my, you know, commercial self-propelled mower is probably gonna be quicker to get off and get set up. Um, but yeah, I'd, it's, it's nice to try something different. Oh, this is probably a good place to test the range because there's no one here. That would have to be at least 100 meters down there. Let's, let's see if it stays in range there. I imagine it would, like I have a drone and that goes a couple of Ks. So it hasn't stopped yet, still going. I feel like that's the best part of 100 metres. Turns around perfect. Okay, so it's on auto mode. I can just give it a little bump and it, it keeps going st straight in that direction. Now I also have to make clear, none of this is paid promotion. They did reach out to me about doing some paid reviews and stuff, but that doesn't really appeal to me. Sorry, mate. Little ride on. This thing turns heads everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, you're not meant to sit on it, but it seems to uh, work. So I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, yeah, it, it's not made for this, but uh, of course I had to try it. So the uh, yeah paid review thing, I'm not being paid to show this piece of equipment or anything. I just found it super interesting, super different to what I've been using lately. So. That's why I'm showing it. So I'm not even taking a normal rotary mower today. Yeah, I'm not even taking a normal rotary mower today. The aim for today is just to detach all the grass. Maybe collect, maybe collect some of it and put it in the bin. But if the grass is too wet, got too much moisture in it, I'll come back tomorrow and, and pick up the rest of it. But, I'm sure by now all of you have seen this flail mower that I have. That's the cutting gear on it. Sorry, Carthix. Okay, so Carthic's here. I just, uh, while I was waiting for him, we're both off a night shift actually, so hopefully, we've got some coffee, hopefully we're gonna go all right on the podcast. I just uh, thought I'd have a go in some damp grass mulching and uh, it did an okay job. Not perfect. We're going to be talking about this on the podcast. So if you want to know more about this in detail, uh, go listen to the Turf and Pools. Turf and Pools. Yeah. 
<laughs> go listen to the Turf and Tools podcast, or if you want to watch the video of it, it's on uh, YouTube. Okay, podcast done. That's oh, us oh. two uh, waffling for, a, I don't know, oh, yeah. 40, 50, 60 minutes or something. Yeah, I reckon we went for yeah. a bit today. If you uh, yeah, want to know more about the Mo Raider remote control mower, hey, go hit, check it. Hit, hit subscribe on it. We need more people. Subscribe, isn't it? Is that what people I, do on podcasts? Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about them. Follow them. Follow the podcast. Them yeah. yeah, like them. Do something. <laughs> Okay, we're back to the scene of the crime from last week. Have the flower mower here. Very, very brown lawn. There's some green amongst it coming back. If you didn't see last week's Fremo Friday video, this is what we did. Yeah, you just gotta trust me. If this stuff is mowed regularly, it will come back and be beautiful. Not a question about it. Bit of water, regular mowing. And it'll be nice and thick in no time. This here's another story. It's a garden bed. Uh, I'm gonna spray this when I'm all done because we don't want the grass growing back through there. I don't know what they're gonna do with there. But yeah, I, I know it doesn't look pretty, but um, I guess that was probably one of the you know, worst little front yards I've done. So sometimes you gotta go backwards to go forwards with this sort of stuff. Anyway, we're gonna do the back today. We're gonna to knock over the back today. I don't know how much we're gonna get through. Let's get the big girl off, or well, big boy, I haven't decided. We probably need a name for this thing. What should we call the flower mower? Surprisingly easy to get this thing off. Welcome back. Look at this monster yard. This is the backyard. We did the front last week. Sorry about the noise. Some work going on out the back. Wow. This is wild. It's even growing up the fence. It's trying to climb over the fence. Now I have done a walk through, through this yard. This is a lot, a lot of grass, not only up top, but down the bottom from where it's been just, uh, for lack of a better term, mulch mode. There's a lot of dead matter there. Look at that, you can see that there. Um, luckily though, thankfully managed waste, uh, I did ask managed waste service to drop off a bin for me, which is gonna make things easier. I think we're gonna fill it pretty quickly. Might have to get them to come and empty it. People will be disappointed because there's not going to be a ton of edging in this video. So the flail mower is time to shine. Should have no problem with this yard. It's pretty open too. Not a massive yard. But we should be able to knock it down quickly and start getting the grass into the uh, bin. It's pretty clean through it. We don't want to uh, be destroying any more equipment this week. Go and watch last week's video if you want to see me destroy a mower. I've got some lovely weeds here. I've got a little bit of trimming actually here. I have to clean this up. Is this path here? I don't know if it's path or just grass. It's just grass, I think. No concrete. Every time you see one of these in the backyard, I get people asking what it is. Um, that's a rainwater tank. It's a requirement for a lot of these lots now. Yeah, I, I believe it just uses the water from the, the roof, fills that up and you've got another water supply. Anyway, singular tree in the backyard. Hey, look at that, that just knocks it over so quickly. I was taking my time to not only does it mow, like a lot of mowers could get through this, absolutely, but it would still leave a lot of a, 
horizontal growth there. I didn't even go the lowest. I could probably go one lower, but it's going to be very bare as it is. I might start raking it up, see what it looks like. Do the edges here before we head out into the wild. The wild, wild. Now, as always, I'm sure there'll be a few people in the comments saying um, you've cut it too low, uh, you've killed it, all that sort of stuff. Normal stuff, most of you know by now, but this is Kikuyu grass. Good luck killing it, you're not gonna kill it. This is actually the best thing for this, uh, for lack of a better term, lawn. This is all horizontal growth. This isn't the stuff that was sticking up. These runners just form this thick, dense mat. But if you nick all of those, it just spurs on new growth. Have a look at this, look at the runners. That's crazy. And that's not nice lawn. So the best thing for this lawn is to cut it aggressively, sever all that horizontal growth, and it'll be quite rejuvenative. I know I've told most of you that a hundred plus times, but there will still be people in the comments um, telling me I don't know what I'm doing, so. First pass on this, just here, this section here, we are gonna be filling up this bin in no time. Here's a prime example, horizontal growth. So I've got to pick that grass up, obviously, but that's um, pretty much one section done, regardless of how much I get done here today. I'm going to be back here tomorrow. I'll bring the remote control mower back. Once I've cleaned all this up, to go over it multiple times and just bag up as much of the leftover debris as possible. I'm not necessarily doing that because it's the best tool for the job. I, I just want to see how it performs in that scenario. And it's fun. But um, look at that already, that section compared to this. Let's rip in with the flail. This thing just makes my life so much easier. There'll be people saying you could whipper snip it, line trim it, but it just doesn't detach that horizontal stuff when you when you whipper snip or, or line trim up. Uh, it still leaves all those runners sticking up, it's really combing all the garbage out. I wish I had it years ago, to be honest with you. I'm not as unfit as I sound. It's uh, just a little bit tough sometimes with the mask on and the humidity. You can see here how long this grass was or some of it. There's a few stripes here where obviously the wheels laid it down. I'm gonna do another pass, but look what a great job it's done in between there, awesome. I'll be going the opposite way once I've done all of this anyway. All right, that's, uh, we got a lot of grass. Again, it never looks big on camera, but that's a lot of grass. The bin is technically full already. We're gonna try and squash it down a bit. It's just, this machine gets you to this point, in my opinion, so much quicker than that, or a mower. It just gets rid of so much of the crap from underneath. So this is part of the reason that I take all this grass. I get rid of it, I cut it right back. Because in a lot of these situations, someone's been here 
and just done a slash and dash before and then look at look at what's underneath like there's a lot of dead stuff there Whew, we've picked up all that grass still gonna mow it tomorrow with the bag mower but uh, still got to do that with the line trimmer get rid of that weed bit of tidy up there but I'm gonna go over this again the opposite direction just make sure we've got every bit oh, wow what a difference hardest part of this was the raking the mower did all the work have a look so much grass so much grass gone obviously very brown this stuff bounces back I don't know how many times I can tell you but I've got to come back tomorrow I'm going to uh, bring the remote control mower back and just mow over it a bunch of times and just suck up as much of the clippings as possible I've raked up as much as I can uh, and we're just going to tidy up this little area here and then we will be done all right so back to store hub just dropped off the flail mower I'm picking up the remote control mow rater oh let's see how we go up here That's fun. Again, I could absolutely use a normal mower for this task, but I'm testing this thing out. Uh, and it means I can just stand there and bag the rest of the grass in the shade, which is very appealing to me. Like most battery mowers, I don't think it's gonna be the best bagger in the world. They're meant to be coming out with a another blade it's like a, a leaf blade which looks like a super high lift blade which might be better for bagging i think it's more for leaves than that i, I don't know it'll be interesting to try it anyway kind of easy to get off with these ramps i might take them i definitely could have just finished off the job yesterday and left it as it was but uh yeah i'm very particular about what i do it cost me a lot of time unfortunately but Oh, it is what it is. Might even be able to strap this down. Maybe. Standard, that ain't going nowhere. I did mention quite a few vlogs ago, I went to a place to see about getting a uh, fold down ramp for the side here because the uh, push mowers go in there normally. And yeah, they were gonna get back to me, didn't. I rang, they said, oh, we're just kinda scratching our heads how we're going to come up with it uh, I said no worries if you if you can't do it just let me know but no give us another couple of days that was about two weeks ago so it's hard to get stuff done even <laughs> when you got the money it's hard to get stuff done really hard I do need to get it most of you would have seen these just um, aluminium wheelchair ramps that I've got that they work but I want something more permanent that I can just like a bifold ramp on the other side. A little disappointing that they couldn't even get back to me after visiting them and calling them back. So we're not trying these today, but uh, we did have a visitor in the area. My flail mower, which you, you've probably seen, a lot of people have seen me using it going um, to, you know, to be better in a ride-on. This is virtually a ride-on version of that, a four-wheel drive. The AS Motor Yak. So, ride on. It's got the uh, same sort of flails on it. That would be fun. We're going to give it a go at some stage. Not today because we're just uh, flat out. Also have a uh, remote control flail. Tracked flail. And then we've got the Sherpa, which has more of a slasher blade. I don't know if I can get under there, but... Some nice equipment that definitely I want to try out. How much was this one again? $39.9. Okay. So you're looking the guts of 40 grand for this one, but we're sitting down. It's comfy. What size engines on the remote control? 23 horsepower. 23 horsepower. What what uh, motor? Vanguard Bridge Train Vanguard. A Vanguard on it, okay. Nice. Well, we'll have to try that out soon. We're going to um, 
We're going to hit this corner quickly, clean that up. Uh, and then we're going to run the robot all over the yard and bag it up as best we can. We've already collected most of the grass. Come on. Out you go, buddy. Out you go. I'll leave you in the shade. There you go. You can have a little rest for a second, okay? I was waiting for a little bit at store hub and just checked some of the tools I had there. I'm going to use something I haven't used for a long time, purely because it's got fuel sitting in it and uh, it probably needs a run. The uh, FS94 still, I haven't used it for a long time. Oop, it's only got like 2.4 in it. Is that two or 2.4? Either way, that won't last too long. I've got some 2.7 in my pocket. These things are super spiky. They really annoy me. <laughs> We're gonna try and cut it off with the chainsaw first, the little baby chainsaw. Forgot how it rips, obviously it didn't have the guard on it. I uh, run with guards now, but that absolutely ripped through it. Might have to use a bit more. Okie dokie, I'm going to stand in the shade and uh, start bagging this grass up. Hopefully it bags well enough. I gotta say, once you've done all the knocking down and then you're just vacuuming up this grass, it's one of the bits of the job that I hate. It's so dusty, messy. To not have to stand near the machine, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. It's bagging it reasonably well. And I'm standing in the shade, so I know some of you are gonna think that's lazy, but I've got it, why not use it? Well, that made things easier. Uh, it was definitely no quicker. But boy, was it nice to stand in the shade, bring it back to me just to have to empty. I've got 10 catches full, so we still got a lot of grass, a lot of debris out of this, even after raking it all up initially after the flail mower. Um, yeah, obviously it's not gonna be for everyone, but um, I enjoyed using it today. Took a ton of grass, uh, filled up that bin completely, another two green bins, and then I took a bag. Um, I got 10 bags on the mow rater at the end as well. And that is the best thing for it, not leaving those clumps and clumps of grass. It can now breathe and recover. It's not a really spongy surface. So yes, I know there'll be some people thinking that, uh, you know, I've cut it too low, it's dead. No, this is absolutely the best thing for it. It's much harder work, obviously. It's a much, much more work for me but we don't do a slash and dash here because it's not the best thing for the lawn. You're not really achieving a lot. You're just kicking the can down the road if you're you know, just mulching those clippings um, back into the lawn. Different story if it's a maintained lawn, mulching is great, but when it's this long and it's not a paddock, you really need to get rid of all of that grass. And I know that's not necessarily achievable for um, some contractors that um, the client just isn't willing to pay for that service. They're only willing to pay for a slash. But uh, if I'm doing it like this, you know, the client's not paying here. So I'm going to do it to the best of my ability as I would if it was my own yard. I'm very happy with it. If you like this video, make sure you're following Fremo Fridays or subscribe. We also have a podcast now. Make sure you check out the podcast, Turf and Tools podcast. 
obsessive Blawney, Karthik and I talking all things tools, all the tools that I try out. Until next week, see you later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm.